Good morning, everyone. Today is Tuesday, August 25th, 2020. I'm Karen Bodenschatz, and I serve as Associate Pastor at First Lutheran Church in Onalaska, Wisconsin. And welcome to my Tuesday morning musing. Um, we're going to try and do this in one go because it is Move the Dirt Back into Place Day at the construction site across the street. Um, and while they're on a little bit of a break, I'm going to squeeze in videoing this musing. So here we go. On October 16, 1995, while the Million Man March was happening in Washington, D.C., President Bill Clinton was giving a speech on the campus of the University of Texas. In that speech, he said, Blacks must understand and acknowledge the roots of white fear in America. There is a legitimate fear of the violence that is too prevalent in our urban areas. By experience, or at least what people see on the news at night, violence for those white people too often has a black face. There's a lot to unpack in these few sentences, and I don't have time in this museum to do that unpacking fully, but I encourage you to read Ibram Kendi's book, How to Be an Anti-Racist, to get a detailed unpacking. I heard and then read this quote in chapter six, and it has set off a whole series of ponders and realizations for me, some of which I will talk about today. So I was 24 years old when Pastor President Clinton uttered these words, and my 24-year-old self would most likely have agreed with him, because by that time I had been indoctrinated into this way of thinking. It was everywhere. I've said before, these thought patterns were in the air we breathed and the water we drank, in the ways that we were taught, the language that was used, the news that was reported, the movies that were made. You could not escape racist thinking that would lead even the most educated and highly placed person to say that blacks must understand and acknowledge the roots of white fear in America. What my 49-year-old self knows and continues to learn over and over again is that whites must understand and acknowledge the roots of white fear in America. That it is not the job of black people of this country to solve racism, to fix a broken system, to educate white people, to understand anything beyond their right to live free in this country of ours without fear of losing their lives simply because a white person was afraid of their black body walking or jogging down the street. Sadly, they are all too well acquainted with white fear and the impact that it has on their lives. We as white people, well, we were sold a bill of goods. We were told long before 1995 that black people were dangerous, violent, uncontrollable, angry, savage, evil. We have been told that black inner city neighborhoods were dangerous and violent places, that black men in particular were horrible, violent, irresponsible people who didn't know how to be a father to any of their number of children. These are all lies, or at the very least gross stereotypes used by a racist system to oppress one group and keep the other group in fear. And friends, I am a follower of Jesus and I do not take kindly to be kept in fear because I was not given a spirit of fear, but a spirit of power and of love and of self-discipline. It is so insidious, friends, these racist ideals that have been so deeply woven into the fabric of our psyche as a nation that we haven't and in some cases still don't realize it. My 24-year-old self, she believed these things even though she never saw or experienced her black or Latinx or Asian friends in this way. Sure, there was violence, but as I think about that violence, it wasn't a part of her or her friends' lives. It lived on the periphery, was something that happened rarely or with a very small group of people. And yet racist ideas still managed to make their way in to all of us. My 49-year-old self has since seen the complete data that tells a different story, or at least a more complete story. What is real is what I actually experienced growing up, that researchers have found a much stronger and clearer correlation between violent crime levels and unemployment levels than between violent crime and race. The work that I've been doing as I continue to listen to and read Dr. Kendi's book, the work I encourage you to do has been to rewrite the narrative my younger self was told based on the truth my older self now understands. 
to study the history of racism, to face down my own understandings, and to acknowledge that the fear I carry, however subconscious, is unfounded. President Clinton was wrong. Black people don't need to understand and acknowledge my fear. I need to understand and acknowledge and then dismantle my fear. Which, friends, is nothing more than learning to love my neighbor fully. And I know that I am not alone in this work. I hope you are doing your work because the truth is black bodies will continue to be killed for being black until we as white people understand our fear. It is our duty as Jesus followers to dive in deep and to do the work for we are not slaves to fear in Jesus. And if we discover that we have been held captive to fear, even unrecognized fear, as faithful people, we need to loose those chains and live as people, the people that we are, freed to love the world for the sake of Jesus.